Meet Dr. Mike, the internet doctor who's captured millions of hearts around the globe. He's been on countless news stations, he's saved a man's life on a flight to Israel, he has over 10 million subscribers on YouTube, and he still finds time to practice medicine two to three days per week. He's a medical professional, a media personality, an influencer, an educator, and YouTube's favorite doctor. But Dr. Mike's rise to internet fame was far from linear. And growing up, he was about as far from a YouTube star as one can be. So how did he get here? How did he gain 10 million subscribers in mere five years? And how does he maintain his internet credibility amidst his internet fame? This is the story of how Mikhail Varshavsky, or as we know him, Dr. Mike, became YouTube's favorite doctor. Let's get into it. Dr. Mike's story begins in a small town in Russia. When he was six years old, his parents told him that they were moving to America, giving no additional information about why they were leaving or how long they'd be gone for. They told him not to tell anyone, to keep it a secret. They had only 24 hours of notice to say goodbye to their closest friends, and then they hopped on a plane to America. Later, Dr. Mike would realize that his family came to the US under a refugee status as his parents wanted a better life for him and his sister. When Dr. Mike's family arrived in America, in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, they were dirt poor. They lived in welfare housing in a red-controlled one-bedroom apartment with Dr. Mike, or I guess just Mike at the time, and his sister sharing the bedroom and his parents sleeping in the living room. There were cockroaches and mice, but to Mike, this was home. No one spoke English very well, but that didn't stop them. While Dr. Mike was going to school and taking ESL classes, his father was taking English classes and going to medical school for the second time in his life in his 40s in a new language. Because of this unique timing, young Mike got to witness his father going to medical school. Mike's dad would take him into his residency on bring your child to work days, and that's how Mike originally fell in love with the field of medicine. Fast forward through middle school and high school, and Mike gets accepted into a seven-year combined medical education program. Three years undergraduate studies, four years med school, all combined as long as you maintain a certain GPA and test credentials. During medical school, you have to decide what specialty you're going to choose, and Mike fell in love with family medicine and primary care. While it's one of the specialties that pays the least and is the least rewarding in terms of administrative hurdles, Mike loved the connections he could build with patients and the fact that he could learn about every part of the body. At only 24 years old, Mike graduated from medical school and officially became Dr. Mike. He was hired for his residency at a hospital in New Jersey, and everything was going as planned. Until the second year of his residency. It's 2015, during Dr. Mike's second year residency, and Dr. Mike is on Instagram. He was by no means a content creator or an influencer. He was merely using Instagram as a sort of personal vlog through pictures. He was posting things like this and this. Very normal, run-of-the-mill, personal Instagram stuff. And then BuzzFeed published an article about him. It was a very superficial article titled, Um, You Really Need to See This Hot Doctor and His Dog. The entire article comprises of pulling pictures from Dr. Mike's Instagram and commenting on how attractive he and his dog were. The article was from their Dude a Day series, which also had an email version where you could, and I quote, have a hot guy in your inbox every weekday. Dr. Mike didn't submit himself or his Instagram to BuzzFeed. He didn't even know what was happening. But in the first week following the publication of the BuzzFeed article, Dr. Mike gained 1 million Instagram followers. Almost overnight, Dr. Mike's life changed. He found himself struggling to balance his image as a health professional who wanted to be taken seriously and this new sexy doctor stereotype. At that point, he had to make a decision. Would he accept this and lean in to the whole sexy doctor thing following the internet celebrity route, or would he ignore the internet fame and just continue his residency? Ultimately, he decided to try to split the difference. Could he use his newfound internet fame to gain visibility and then leverage that visibility to advocate for preventative care, bust health myths, and empower people to take control of their own health? He gave it a try, and it worked. He started getting invited onto talk shows and news outlets. But unfortunately, these media companies had their own agendas. 
In one noted example, Dr. Mike was invited onto an internet show for a segment about why going to the gym is healthy for you. But when he walked on set with the producer and the recorders, they asked him to take his shirt off and start working out. Dr. Mike just walked right off set because to him, the fame wasn't the important part. What he cared about was having the platform to advocate for health at a large scale. When he realized that all these media companies wanted to talk about was his looks or something superficial, he said, forget it. Forget these producers who don't get it. I'm gonna be my own producer and launch a YouTube channel that debunks all of this BS I'm seeing across medical media. And just like that, Dr. Mike's YouTube channel was born. And at this point, Dr. Mike didn't really know about editing or YouTube, so he just set up a webcam and recorded a video about a recent medical study that had come out. In his own words, the video was absolute garbage. At around that time, an editor named Dan Owens reached out to Dr. Mike and said, Hey, I see you're doing well on Instagram. Have you ever considered video content? The two met up, talked about the concept of Dr. Mike's YouTube channel, and decided to team up. That first year, they prioritized being consistent, uploading one video per week. At the end of the year, they had uploaded 52 videos and gained 200,000 subscribers. Now, to anyone who's new on YouTube out there, this seems like a ton. But to Dr. Mike and Dan, it felt like a failure. You see, at that point, Dr. Mike already had 2 million Instagram followers. He and Dan thought that at least half of them would come over to YouTube too, but that didn't end up happening. And this was a big hit for them because they were continuing to pour money into the YouTube channel. And when Dr. Mike started his channel, he was already $300,000 in debt. Medical school, man. But Dr. Mike and Dan believed in their message, believed that more people needed to learn about their health. And so they pressed on. Fast forward two months later, and Dr. Mike and Dan are in the YouTube space in New York City, using their studio and equipment to film videos. They were filming a video about the difference between a real doctor and a TV doctor. And the team asked him, hey Mike, so many people are asking you to react to medical dramas. Why don't you do it? At that time, reacts content, in which someone watched a video and then reacted to that video, was going a bit viral on YouTube. And so at the end of his Real Doctor vs. TV Doctor video, Dr. Mike said, If you get this video to 10,000 likes, which is very doable, you've done that for a lot of my videos already, I will watch a Grey's Anatomy episode. The video got the likes, and Dr. Mike sat down and watched and reacted to the first episode of Grey's Anatomy. The video blew up. We're talking 30 million views big time. So they made another medical drama reacts video. That video also blew up. They made another one, that video blew up. In a few short months, they had gained a million subscribers. At that point, something clicked. Medical content as a whole was a pretty serious, unapproachable topic to the masses. But by leveraging something that was already familiar to people, such as a beloved television show, and then mixing that with something new to people, such as medical education, the medical content became much more palatable, engaging, and sticky. So they continued to experiment with different ways that could mix medical education with content that was more familiar to the masses. Dr. Mike reacted to medical dramas. He reacted to medical scenes in non-medical shows. He reacted to medical memes. He started a series responding to people's medical questions in his comments, questions that people were sometimes too embarrassed to ask their own doctor. And through it all, his subscriber count continued to climb. Then came 2020 and the pandemic happened. People were in his comment section asking for a video on the coronavirus for months, but Dr. Mike wasn't comfortable putting out a video until he had more information. This was in stark contrast to what everyone else was doing, what people were seeing on television and the news, where everyone and their mothers had something to say about COVID or some theory, regardless of the actual accuracy or value. When Dr. Mike felt he had enough information, he started to release videos on the pandemic, which were based in science, reasoning, honesty, and transparency. He was clear about what he did and did not know and how things might change in the future. During those early days in the pandemic, Dr. Mike became the source of medical information on YouTube, debunking misinformation and fake documentaries. The channel provided accurate, easy to understand information at a critical time, and there weren't many other sources of information like that at that time. Dr. Mike's channel continued to grow throughout the pandemic, and through it all, his reputation blossomed to be considered as the go-to for real medical information, sound medical advice, and non-judgmental education. 
And that's how Dr. Mike went from being $300,000 in debt to becoming YouTube's favorite doctor. It's easy to point to that original BuzzFeed article and the subsequent Instagram virality and attribute all of Dr. Mike's internet success to that. And sure, starting out with 2 million Instagram followers definitely helps. But it wasn't the sexy doctor thing that catapulted Dr. Mike's YouTube channel from 200,000 subscribers to over 10 million subscribers in just five years. Instead, Dr. Mike and his team implemented a number of key tactics and strategies that any educational YouTuber can learn from and apply to their own channels, regardless of their subscriber count or follower count. First, we have consistency. It's been said a million times, but it's worth saying again. In that first year, Dr. Mike released 52 videos. That's one video per week for a full year. If you're not consistent on YouTube, you're not going to last long enough to implement any other YouTube tactics or strategies. There are no shortcuts for consistency. You have to keep showing up. Next, we have experimentation and adaptation. As we've seen throughout the entirety of Dr. Mike's YouTube journey, he's constantly experimenting with new formats. When conventional talking head videos weren't working for him, he experimented with React's content. Finding success there, he continued to evolve, reacting to non-medical shows, medical memes, and even TikTok trends. He integrated day in the life vlogs, medical Q and A's and responsive comments, and even podcast episodes featuring high profile guests. If you're creating content that doesn't seem to be working, what other formats could you consider? If you're stuck, I have an entire video breaking down eight different video formats you can try. I'll link it somewhere up here for you. Another contributing factor to Dr. Mike's YouTube success is his approachability and authenticity. Especially in a field like medicine, it's easy to get lost in technical jargon and complexities. But instead, all of Dr. Mike's content is designed so that anyone can understand it, even if you have absolutely no medical background whatsoever. He consistently combines content that is familiar to a viewer, such as a popular television show or a meme, with educational content that is new to a viewer. This makes his content much more palatable, digestible, and engaging. And finally, through it all, Dr. Mike has maintained his credibility and has never sold out on his ethics. In his position, it would be very financially advantageous to sell something like supplements. In fact, the total value of the Miracle Cure All sponsorships that Dr. Mike has turned down is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But Dr. Mike doesn't sell out, ever. And as a result, he's built up an incredibly strong foundation of trust with his viewers, which is one of the reasons why his pandemic videos did so well. If he hadn't had built up that trust beforehand, his channel would have never blown up to the degree that it did during the pandemic. The trust Dr. Mike has developed is a compounding asset and will continue to pay dividends in the future. And that's how Dr. Mike grew his YouTube channel to over 10 million subscribers. If there's another YouTuber you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested about how to use React's content like Dr. Mike, or are curious about other types of video formats that you can try out, check out this video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you can, and I will see you in the next video.